went out and did a little preliminary shooting with our Japanese Type 99 rifle. And I got two of them, so I'm going to do two different videos. This is the mid-war one, which is in a little bit better shape. And it's also got a flip-up sight. I did finally get the aircraft wings for this. Zoom in on this a little. See the aircraft flip-up wings. I got some of those and the screws to go with it, so it's a nice little option. And in shooting this, one thing that did make a difference is these little protectors here on the front sight. You kind of use them when you look through the peep sight and you don't see either one. You just see that blade, like a little pyramid in the center. And even with the base, kind of like M1 Garand, M1 carbine sights. Um, you can use that to adjust for windage real quick, left or right. In other words, your sight picture is supposedly dead center, you don't see them. Then you shift the gun one way till you see just breaking through the little round peep sight, that protector, you just barely see it. And you could adjust for windage, damn horn, uh, one way or the other, which is nice about this gun. It's one thing I do use when I go and shoot this. Um, the last ditch one doesn't have that. And also, uh, I did some reloads, just preliminary. I used a Hornady full metal jacketed bullet, standard Spitzer bullet, 174 grains, and it's a 300 and not quite 105 thousandths diameter. Say it's a 311. And I found that the bores on both rifles slug about 3. 115. So you got about a four thousandths difference there uh, in the bore and the groove diameter. So your accuracy with this bullet, even though it's the right size bullet to use for uh, for the Japanese rifle or the British 303, I think can use this also. Uh, the accuracy isn't there. And since I didn't have anybody operating the camera. I'm going to throw in two clips uh, of me shooting the rifle, and I won't be talking in that, just on the bench shooting. And the first one, I shot five rounds and couldn't get on the paper, so then I went to the last ditch rifle, and I got on the paper with that, and then I went back to this gun, and you know, then I knew where I was shooting, I got on the paper with this gun, and then I got 10 rounds in, and I'll, I'll show you the target at the end. I didn't, the uh, range was crowded today. It was I didn't have anybody to operate the camera, so I just set it off to the side, and you'll see me shooting. And then uh, after we do them two shooting clips of this, we'll come back and uh, I'll show you the target and the results I got with this ammo.
Okay, we just seen our two clips of shooting the rifle. And I only shot this rifle to test reloads out, the mid-war one. I only shot it to with a chronograph off a bench of 50 yards just to check it out. This is the first time I've shot it at 100 yards. And we were shooting at 100 yards. And here's the result of the target. Sorry. Uh, we were shooting at 100 yards, and here's the target and the results we got. Okay. Now, the gun was shooting somewhat. I was aiming here. Point aim was up here at the top. And I was dropping down into the bullseye area. And at first it was shooting a little to the left through here. And kind of this is one of the ones I got on there that kind of I tried zeroing in with another string and figured out where I was and adjusted my sights and was getting them to where I was cutting into the bull. I think you can see that. So that there was our results at uh, 100 yards of that. And it's pretty good. But I believe if I uh, do something with the bullet, I can tighten this group up. And I'm going to do some research and, and uh, try to modify or change the bullet diameter, get a different bullet diameter, do some more experimenting with it. But that's actually pretty good for an old military gun. Okay, and then uh, I'll do a video, a separate one, on the uh, late war last ditch rifle.